it doesn't mean that the nation of Australia is racist. Contrary to what the Australian Broadcasting Corporation would tell us. Contrary to what people like Laura Tingle would tell us. Get my street again, get me hit in the game with the red light on. I'm just waiting for the change. Get me head down low. Let the winter... Okay, so when I was policing, especially uh, I remember when I was in general duties, uh, people had told me, people that had known me for a long time had told me that I was I had uh, my attitude towards some things had started to change. Uh, and when I was dealing with people outside of work, but dealing with other like family members and that, I, I'd become a little a little blunt with the way I would uh, deal with situations, uh, the way I would talk to people. You know, I'd be talking to family, um, and it was just like, well, no, this is going to happen. No, it, it was very black and white for me. Um, you know, things were. I treated things like everything was black and white. It was just. It was. It was just. Uh, cut and dry there was not a lot of middle ground not a lot of wiggle room and and I, I remember reflecting on this a little bit and thinking yeah well that's because you you're faced with these situations and you're you're constantly having to make decisions uh j just decisions in a very short amount of time and a lot of these decisions uh tended to affect people's lives uh sometimes quite profoundly so you had a lot of responsibility. So basically you would just, you'd fall into this mode. Well, someone would tell you something, someone else would tell you something else and you'd just be like, bang, I'm down there. This is my decision. I'm on this side or I'm on that side or whatever. <clears throat> and I found that um, I'd come to decisions really kind of probably quickly, sometimes maybe too quickly, I'm not sure. But uh, like I said, it's very cut and dry, black and white. Nah, this is right. This is wrong. And that was how my attitude was going and rightly or wrongly, I think it was a product of the work environment. For, for instance, I, I think, I think this, this example would uh, make sense. I think in that, uh, I remember going to a job, um, general duties. I was up in far Northern uh, past Cairns uh, working. And I remember going to a job, uh, probably really early hours of the morning being called to a job and people were fighting. Apparently we get to this place. There's some music going. Um, I think it was around two o'clock in the morning. Uh, people were sitting around in a, like a circle. There was some music going. <clears throat> Everyone's just kind of sitting, just sitting, sitting and just kind of staring as if, you know, nothing to see here. They obviously did not want police. <laughs> Lisa, there. You just ruining our fun. Um, the problem is there's a woman just sitting there, not saying anything, not doing anything, just kind of sitting, staring. <clears throat> Her face is all busted up. Like, it was busted up. She had busted lips. Her cheeks were busted. Uh, she was busted up. And she had blood. There was, you know, just kind of dripping. She looked a mess. But she's just sitting there. Nothing, nothing, nothing to see here, nothing to complain about. Like, there's nothing wrong. What? the heck are you doing here uh there's a guy sitting next to her uh, he's just sitting there staring in the space just he's like i think he said something like oh you know there's nothing going on why are you even here <laughs> you sit there going, well <laughs> the lady next year has got a her face is extremely swollen and she looks like a mess uh the blood dripping from her face onto the floor uh and the blood splatter all around the room suggests that something's gone on now the other thing that was uh, that uh, drew my attention was the fact that his knuckles were a little bit busted up, and you're sitting there going, "Well, how did this happen? How did you get those injuries?" Nothing fell over. Fell over. <laughs> she fell over repeatedly onto his fist. Is what I think happened. There were other people in the room. Everyone's just like, "No, nah, no one. No one wanted to tell us anything. No one wanted to tell us what had gone on. No one knew what had gone on. No one saw anything. No one heard anything." No one knew a thing. No one was saying a thing. So in the in the end, no one's given us any statements. Nothing's happened. No one wanted to make a complaint. Uh, I think we just took the bloke away. I can't, I can't remember anything else that happened. I, I remember we took him away. Um, so he gets put into the back of the van. So oh, so if you do that, obviously you're you're arresting him. You're detaining someone. But I can't remember the other details. All I remember is we took him away. Um. 
the thing is, you know, we came, you come to this conclusion, even though no one's said anything, no one's given a statement, no one's provided you with any proof. There's one woman with a busted up, bruised, bloodied face. And then the guy next to her has got busted, bruised knuckles. You, you quickly come to the conclusion that maybe something has gone on and maybe the lady is in danger and maybe we should take the bloke away and, uh, you know, see what, see what else we can do. If anything, just, just to make the place a little safer. So that's what's going on. You don't do these things because you're thinking about stereotypes of people. You don't th do th these things because, you know, I wasn't doing it because I'm racist, because, you know, it's just this certain ethnicity. I look at people and think, well, this is the problem. They do this, they do this. And of course, they hit their women. Of course, it's him. Because all those all those men hit their women. All those women carry on like this. And it's nothing like that. You're just looking at a busted up woman who's bleeding, extremely bruised and beaten looking, and you're looking at a bloke with there with her knuckles. So you come to a conclusion, so you take action. And this is what happens. So I'm going to share this video, and this is about Victorian police. I look at this, this video, and I'll give I'll I'll say more after the video, but I look at it that Victorian police are faced with a problem. They're faced with the problem. They have got extremely violent gangs getting around in Victoria at the moment. Now, predominantly, these gangs are Sudanese. That's just the facts. That's just the facts. That's just the facts. They they come across these gangs. These gangs are committing crimes, extremely violent crimes, um, robberies, uh, stabbing people, stabbing each other. You know, they're extremely violent. Uh and then Victorian police are faced with these facts. And so they're trying to let the bureaucrats know. They're trying to let the, you know, all the, the left woke bureaucrats who have this ideology that, uh, you know, everything just, uh, everyone should just, uh, everyone is racist. You know, if you go and point at someone who isn't white and you say, hey, that person there just committed a violent crime. Ah, well, you sure you're not just racist? This is the attitude they have. This is the ideology they want to live with, that everyone, everyone is racist except for the person with the dark skin. Everyone else, all the white people are racist. The, the, the people who are black, brown, brindle, red, yellow, whatever, they're not racist. It's just the, it's just the nasty white man, the nasty police officer. If you're a police officer and you're black, well, it doesn't matter. You're racist anyway. They don't want to look at facts. So Victorian police have uh, provided them with some facts, on the ground facts, and they haven't liked it. So check out this video, what's going on. Staff members at Victoria's Department of Justice say they sat through a presentation by police that was racist, inappropriate and gratuitously used graphic vision, including of a murder. Police apologised but denied the racism allegation. According to documents obtained by the ABC under freedom of information laws, the session held last year was pitched as a really impactful look at the youth gang landscape in the state. But just over an hour after it ended, the complaint started. One attendee sent an email saying the final presentation of the day was very racist. The response came quickly. The department was already collecting staff concerns. Staff complained about graphic footage of serious assaults and murders, primarily within the South Sudanese community, which was described as gratuitous and used to shock. They said the focus was solely on African gangs. Commentary by the presenter was described as flippant and racist in several points. Attendees were said to be extremely affected and disturbed and claimed earlier warnings about violent content didn't go far enough, with one saying, to put it bluntly, police should have said, we're about to show you someone get stabbed to death. The secretary of the Justice Department called the then acting chief of police and sent a formal letter. It raised the concerns, including claims the presenter used the N-word, 
referred to a child as an offender for life and made comments about sending people home in relation to visa cancellations. The head of Victoria's South Sudanese Community Association couldn't comment on the presentation, but did say... I've got to stop and comment. Listen, I love the way they've just taken out little snippets of what they, this is what they've heard. They heard racist commentary. Police are talking about people, youth gangs, who are predominantly Sudanese, from the Sudanese committee. And all these people see is police being racist. Police are racist because they're picking on, they're picking on Sudanese. Oh, now, police are talking about how offenders possibly being sent home. I mean, we, we talked about that all the time when I was in QPS. You'd be talking about it because you, you realise that, okay, if these people get caught, uh, if it's um, if these offenders, because they've committed this crime, uh, they are going to be sent home. It was just a fact that you spoke about. It's not that you're sitting there planning. You you don't make these people commit the crimes that that causes them to get sent back to the country they came from. They commit the crime all by themselves. Funnily enough, you don't you don't help them along the way. They commit the crime, and the rules are that if you commit certain crimes, you're going to be sent home. Like I said, you you're. It seems like the police, the Victorian police, are just presenting these people with the facts. But the problem is, it doesn't suit their own woke ideology. Oh no, they want to believe that there is no way the Sudanese community, there's no way these young children are doing anything wrong. It's the police's fault. It's the white man's fault. You know, it's everyone else. They're all racist because you're pointing out the problems within the Sudanese community. You're pointing out the problems that there's these gangs running around and lo and behold, it's Sudanese gangs. Now, I tell you, when when you're in the police, you're not sitting there thinking, "Oh, I wish every gang was Sudanese." No, you're just sitting there going, "Well, I just go through the gangs. These are the gangs that are causing the problems." Oh, lo and behold, it's Sudanese right at the moment. Now, there's previous generations where different ethnicities cause problems, um, and they were having gangs getting around. The police is not responsible for the ethnicity of the gangs, for crying out loud. That doesn't make you racist because you're pointing out, because you're showing gangs, and they happen to all be ra- they happen to all be Sudanese. That doesn't mean you're racist. That means that the Sudanese community has a problem with their young children. That's what it means. That means that the parents that come here and bring the young children, they're not being parents. They're allowing their children to just run amok in another country. They're not respecting the country. They're not respecting the culture. They're just doing what they want. And they're allowed to do what they want because they have these woke ideologies, who, who woke ideologists who are telling that everyone else is racist and you're not the problem. You're a good person purely because you've got black skin. Purely because you're from another country, well, then you must be a perfect person. Everyone else is the problem. Don't take responsibility. It's everyone else's problem. I just, look, there's nothing much more to say. They These people complained, complained about everything. You know, they were confronted. At the end of the day, they were confronted with the truth. And they didn't like it because it didn't fit their ideology. Getting me to the story that I had about you know, the, the, the intoxicated couple who was sitting there, I, I was confronted with certain facts. Now, I, I don't want, I, I didn't want to jump to conclusions for the fact, but at the end of it all, one person is sitting there battered, bruised, uh, and obviously has obviously been beaten, been hit, obviously. The person next to her is the only one in the whole group who's got busted up knuckles, just happens to be her partner, not much of a partner, but just happens to be her boyfriend, Um, and he's got busted up knuckles. What are you supposed to do? You're faced with certain facts, Oh, and no one, no one wants to tell you what's happening. You're faced with certain facts, and you have to act on those facts. You have to make decisions. Victorian police are faced with the facts 
that the gangs that are getting around committing extremely violent crimes right now are Sudanese. That is the fact. That are they they are the facts. These teenagers are getting around because they don't have they don't have adult supervision. They don't have parents who are behaving like parents. And this is the problem when we just allow people in and, and we don't we don't vet them properly. We just, oh, yep, you're just coming from this group. You're over here. You tell us you're in trouble. We'll just allow you in. Yep, it's all good. Do you know how to be a parent? Do you know how to discipline your children? Do you have any kind of uh, thought process about how you're going to raise your children? How do you raise your children? Can you show us how you raise your children? Do you discipline your children? What are the what what are the ideologies that you live by? What are the ethics that you live your life by? What is your moral compass? Where does your moral compass come from? The, the people who are making these complaints about Victorian police were faced, they are faced with the cold, hard facts of what's going on. That just because you're white or just because you're a police officer doesn't mean that you are racist. And just because you don't have white skin doesn't mean that you are automatically a good person. Just because you're an immigrant from Sudan does not mean you're a nice person. Doesn't mean that you get to just skate on by and allowed a free pass on everything that you do and you can just do whatever the flip you want in someone else's country. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be sent home. It doesn't mean that you should have just come here in the first place. It doesn't mean that if you cannot prove that you are of good standing and you want to actually contribute to this community that you should actually be allowed to stay here. And it doesn't mean that we're racist. The nation of Australia is racist because we want to stand up and we don't want, we want to stand up for our country and we don't want people living in this country if all they're going to do is get around in gangs and cause terror and intimidate the people in one of our states. It doesn't mean that the nation of Australia is racist. Contrary to what the Australian Broadcasting Corporation would tell us, Contrary to what people like Laura Tingle would tell us, that Australia, Australians are just racist. We're just racist. Anyway, just want to give you a bit of my perspective, why police make certain decisions, why we come draw to some conclusions, and and maybe, maybe we don't do things, maybe police don't do things because they're racist all the time. Maybe Australia as a whole isn't racist, isn't just a wholesale racist country, racist group of people. That's just my opinion. I'm Jay Fallon. Let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to The Slippery Slope. They just fuel the desire They will take me higher I'm on fire because Nothing's gonna be